Hi, I'm Cynthia Kahn, founder of Amuse Now, and I'm here today with Jesse Wagner, lead singer with the band Envy and backup singer for both Kid Rock and Lenny Kravitz. Hey, how are you doing, Jesse? I'm doing good. How are you, Cynthia? I'm doing fabulous. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Congratulations on the release of your new single, Stuck in My Own Way. I love it. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, um, that was really fun to record, and, and I think we captured something really special with that one. <laughs> well, I watched all your videos and listened to all your music, and you are way more than a pop singer. Do I hear some blues and country in your music? Uh, the, our music is a combination of so many different genres. It's kind of schizophrenic. But uh, yeah, I would definitely say I'm more than a pop singer. I'd probably say I'm more of a rock soul singer with pop influences here and there. So is that how you would describe your music? Yeah, definitely. That's Envy is like a mishmash of different genres coming together. Uh, to create this sound. Um, everyone in my band has a unique background. I guess I'm more of a, a soul kind of singer that enjoys doing rock music. My drummer, he's more of like a jam band kind of guy. My guitarist, Karen Sullivan, who also produced the album, he's like this laid back island guy feel, uh, or he gives that kind of feel. Um, my bassist, um, Steve Bonaccio, he has like this alter alternative rock thing that he brings to it, but he can lay down the smooth, wicked bass line to whatever you need. And then to round it all out is James Lewis, my other guitarist, who has more of like a blues and an R&B background. So you have all these elements coming together to create this schizophrenic sound that we like to call, you know, rock soul. Oh. My drummer's name is Dave Diamond. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is what makes for interesting music. <laughs> Definitely. I, and I, I love so many different kinds of, of music. So to be able to put it all in, in my sound, it, 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 I, I'm comfortable that way. I wouldn't want to be stuck in one kind of genre because that's not who I am. I embody so many different things, and it comes out in my music. Well, it really shows with your music background and history. You were a member of the group Chic. You've also sang with such greats as Patti LaBelle, Sir Elton John, Peter Gabriel, Sister Sledge, Musique, and the Pointer Sisters. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, no, when I was with Chic, I was blessed to have been able to perform with all these different artists. Now Rogers is such an influ influential um, artist himself, and he's touched so many different kinds of artists and different kinds of music. And through working with Chic, I was able to expand my repertoire and, and my um, my ability to work with different uh, different people and it's been so rewarding and exciting and I'm so grateful to Nal Rogers for giving me that opportunity so I could meet and work with all these wonderful people. So who would you say are your biggest music influences? Oh, that's a very difficult question um, because again I love so many different kinds of music but I'm, I'm drawn to exciting performers as well as um, ha them having big voices. So like Tina Turner, you watch her, she's amazing to watch, she's so vibrant and exciting, but then on top of that she has such a huge voice. And that's kind of what I want to present when I go out on stage. I want to give you everything and be wild and crazy and vibrant and exciting, but still deliver it with a big powerful vocal. Uh, so definitely people like Tina Turner or uh, Robert Plant or somebody like that who's just, you, you're you so drawn in by their physicality and what they present on stage, but then their vocals are, are so supreme and exciting and delicious on top of it all. <laughs> I love your descriptors. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, you are definitely a talented singer. What is your music background and training? Um, 
I, again, I have to say I'm truly blessed to have gotten to where I am in the industry. Uh, I don't really have a formal background. I, I grew up singing in the church. Uh, my mom always kind of pushed me out there because I was kind of shy, actually, when I was younger. Um, but, yeah, I grew up singing in the church, and that's kind of where I learned harmonies and how to blend. But anything else I've learned over the years is from working with other singers, other background singers, and just other people in general and picking and, and kind of gleaning and in gleaning information from them on how to control my voice or use a microphone or uh, stage presence. I learned a lot from um, Silver Logan Sharp, who was the other singer I was working with when I was with Chic. She taught me a lot about how to use the mic, how to use my voice, how to position myself on stage. And so it, it's been a learning process over the years from the different people I've worked with. Wow. What do you look for when you collaborate with other artists? Oh, I, again, because I'm so crazy and nutty, I just want somebody who's crazy and nutty like me, or just someone I can sit down and, and have a good conversation with. Um, I love so many different kinds of music, so I'm not drawn to one particular thing. It's just if I can sit down and we can talk and have, a, a good exchange of knowledge and information and ideas then that's the perfect person for me to work with and and if I've listened to your music and I like your sound and and you know how you write then then I'd be happy to work with you if you're happy to work with me so <laughs> um, it's really just more of um, just an interaction kind of thing well you've got to have charisma or karma or something so that you can work well together, I think, chemistry. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So if I have that chemistry through a conversation, then I know we're probably going to make beautiful music together. <laughs> well, to change the subject a little bit, tell us more about your EP, Project of the Underdog. <laughs> um, Army of the Underdog came from a lot of different people telling me that I should stick to one kind of thing. Um, I shouldn't be a rock singer. Uh, you look a certain way, so you should be like Beyonce, or you should do this, you should do that. And the Army of the Underdog came from me just saying, well, I like rock and roll. I like how I blend it with the other genres. And I want this music that I do just to be free from constraints. And anybody who feels like they can be free from constraints and just be themselves and not have to worry about people telling them you can't. You can be part of the army. That's what the army of the underdog is. It's the underdog saying we can be who we want to be. We can sound like we want to sound. We can try and do our best to do the things that we want to do in life. And who are you to tell us no? So if you feel that way, you can be part of our army. We take misfits. We take crazies, we take nuts, we take normals, we take everything. Anybody who feels like they've been an underdog once or twice in their lifetime. And here's a chance to say, I can. Wow. I'm inspired. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. We got one more convert. Welcome to the Army. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. <laughs> well... This leads into my next question, which I ask everyone, since Amuse Now is about artists helping artists. Um, what advice do you have for other artists who are trying to make a name for themselves? Um, first, make sure you have your whole package together. It, I've The last album I put out, I just put it up there, and I didn't have... Uh, my CD's ready, I just put out a song, and I, I didn't have the package together, and I think the project suffered because I wasn't prepared. It makes sense to have a plan for how you're going to release it, for how you're going to try and distribute it, and market it, and promote it, because it's so hard being independent artist. I know so many people, are, we're all going through the same kind of struggle, but if your first initial push is a strong one, that can help propel your project and help it take it to the next level. So, do you use social media to get the word out? Oh, you have to. Uh, this day and age, I don't know anybody who, who doesn't use social media. It's, it's, it's your lifeline to your fans, to people to learn about who you are. So, yeah, I'm on Twitter. 
uh, Instagram, Facebook. I'm still learning. I'm still I'm learning Google Plus now. So, <laughs> so thank you for introducing that to me. <laughs> but yeah, YouTube. I mean, these are your ways to connect with people, and it's fortunate because we didn't have that in the past. And now you have a direct line to your to your public, to your fans, and you can connect with them in a way that you couldn't do before. Well, I love social media. <laughs> <laughs> Some of it. I'm still learning. I there's there's so many new things that pop up every day and that my eyes are going cross just thinking about it. <laughs> well, Jesse, it's been fabulous getting to know you tonight. Oh, thanks. I really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you. Well, I don't know if you know, but we are building an e-commerce site, and when we launch it, I hope you'll consider adding a Muse Now to your music distribution project plan. That sounds like a plan. I mean, you're already a member of the Army, so we have to work together. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> well, I wish you all good things. Thank you. Same to you. Good night. Night. Hi, I'm Cynthia Kahn, founder of Amuse Now. This featured artist presentation has been brought to you by Amuse Now Entertainment, a website that enables artists to profit from their creativity. To learn more about Amuse Now, visit us at www.amusednow.com or email me at ccon at amusenow.com. <laughs>